Oh, good morning, YouTube. You join me on Friday, I think it's the 30th today of April. Um, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm literally just around the corner from my first job, and I thought, let's just have a little chinwag. Uh, I've been a quiet recently on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. There's a few reasons why. Uh, I'll get into it in a minute. But, Bren, you're a sucker for punishment, mate. When I sent you that message, I was only really wanting to ask you a quick question. Uh, we went through that in the end, but bless you, mate. Um, uh, yeah, so the conversation went, I just, I just basically wanted to ask him about, um, I'm thinking of changing all my customers from, um, pay as you like pay when I visit to, um, working out a price and then splitting it between 12 months rather than 17 visits. Um, some of, some of my customers tend to get a lot, uh, a few more cause one odd job, other odd jobs doing, but as a base rate, changing it over to every 12 months and I remember a few years back I was thinking about doing it and then Bren put a video out um, because he knows another guy that does that and um, he basically looks at his bank statement every month knows how much is going in as a base rate um, and then if anything's missing it's easier to spot um, and that was the reason why I phoned Bren but ended up going on a, a tangent as usual because you don't I don't get to speak to that many people don't get me wrong I have got friends and you know I do speak to people but just other people that I've not really, I don't really speak to very often, um, and just went off on one. Um, but I really hope you're okay, Brandon. Next time we get at least an hour to spare, we'll give you a good phone call and talk about something else other than work. Um, so, <laughs> uh, th th I forgot what this video is about now. Um, so I'm going to do a bit of a question and answers, answer some questions from a, a few of the videos before. Um, I think JP, thank you. At least I'm an amateur, nothing else. Um, you could have said a lot worse. Um, um, Fisher, I think you mentioned about the post mix again. I've got, there's something about people in the UK or uh, British people that seem to have to follow exactly what it says on either a bag or instructions and silly things like that. Let's just clear one thing up about post creep and, and concrete in general, really. When you get a bag of post mix, it tells you roughly what that uh, bag will hold, um, i.e. weight wise. So it's roughly about 20, some places, ooh, some places do 20 and some places do 25 kilo bags. That bag is specifically made to hold up to 1.5 meters in the air um, and two foot down in the ground. And that bag will hold that very safely. Anything above 1.5 meters, rough, I think it was 1.5. Um, I'm pretty sure it is. I'll have to do a check on one of the bags, but I'm pretty sure it's one five. So you need actually one and a half bags for a six five fence. And on that bag, it says um, sets in 10 minutes. It's great. Um, I think I've said this before. A lot of people in a few of my videos have said, why aren't you putting water in? You need to put water in. You have to put water in first. No, you don't. You do physically not have to put water in. At the moment, I would agree with that state. I wouldn't agree with that statement because it's absolutely bone dry. All right. So just for security reasons, I would put water in. You don't necessarily need to put it in first. The only reason that they tell you to put it in first is to make it set in that 10 minutes. So it's about a gallon of water per bag to set that post creep in 10 minutes. But like myself, if you don't want it to set in 10 minutes, pour it in dry Make sure the post is in properly and then put water over the top or just leave it because nine times out of ten in Britain, it's raining. Well, normally it's bone dry at the minute. So that's gone out of the window, hasn't it? Um, so it will just work on capillary action and it will suck up moisture. Concrete is an amazing thing that literally will just suck moisture from anywhere. I've put I've put posts in the ground and been back two days later and that post mix is just as solid as if I'd put water in the hole basically so i know it works and in fact i'm going to do a video on tuesday because my most viewed video of fencing was of a fence that i did it's about four and a half maybe five sections and they've asked me to go back and do the the back fence because it needed doing then and that was a, a, a year or two ago now well no it's probably about well i did well my it won't this year, it won't last year. I can't remember if it was a year before. It's been at least two years, let's put it that way. And I know it's still standing because I've, I've, I've done other work in the garden. Uh, it's not fallen, it's not 
moved. So I know it worked. Well, I've done, I've done lots of fencing and I do the fencing exactly the same. If it's really dry like now, I'll put it in, pour water in and it sets. Simple as. Um, if I wanted it to set in 10 minutes because, you know, like that fence, the, the fence repair that I did, they've got dogs and they're forever jumping at the fence. So I knew I needed that to set. And literally I poured the water in the top and I even showed it in the video. You couldn't wobble the post much. It had set. It had done its job. So that's that one over with. Um, state of play. The reason I've not been doing many videos, main reason is, uh, I'm not going to lie, it's been a struggle. This year has been such a struggle. I lost at least 60% of my customers last year to lockdown. It's... Now, if you look at the structure of my business, most of my customers are 60 plus, And then the others are what Bren said are too busy or just basically can't be asked. Um, so the people that were too busy la the year before are now at home. And then the other people that couldn't be asked are now probably either lost their job or at home. So they can be asked. Um, so I... I gained part of that back, but a lot of people have said, right, well, we've realized we can do without you. It's an extra expense we can do without. Um, or they've literally either passed away because they were old or just they're, they're happy for the kids to do it. And the kids have come over and they're, they're happier to do it. So it has been a struggle. And unfortunately, since lockdown, people on the roads have turned into looms. I mean, even Bren yesterday made a comment saying that the, the lights are like you know they don't mean anything to anybody at the minute so i'm tra talking about traffic lights like obviously he's noticed that people are just randomly going through reds or whatever i don't know um but there just seem to be loons and we are stuck in a situation where we are still stuck in 2019 i've done no end of quotes where i've given them and they're looking at me as if say i'm robbing them i'm like i'm just trying to make an honest day's wage up from a fence and you know they're looking at you as if like you're fucking stringing them by the nuts and like dragging them down the street. Um, and my supplier, even two days ago, sent me a message saying uh, panel prices are going up again. And I think from memory, I'm pretty sure that's the fourth time this year. We're only at the end of April. Um, so it's like when I say to people, it cost me X amount of money to to um, buy the fence before I've even got to you. They're like, no way, it's not that expensive. But what sometimes they do is they'll they'll... Because nobody's been out that much over the last year, they're still stuck in 2019, so they're still stuck on them prices. 2019, I was paying 25 quid a panel. Now it's 35. Um, or if you go to Jacko's and that, it's nearly 40 quid a panel. Um, you know, and it's it's been a bit of a struggle. And it's like, even in the gardening, people, it's like, when you talk to people, it's like, Jesus Christ, you're robbing me. And it's like, well, nothing's changed. I mean, I put out a, a letter every year. And this year, I put a letter out. A letter, not letter. Um, and a lot of people contacting me and saying, you're, you're way expensive, you're too expensive, you've doubled your prices. I'm like, what? No, I'm not. Read the letter. You're getting charged the exact same amount. All I've done is taken an hourly... All the other customers that I had as an hourly rate, I've stopped the hourly rate and I've given them... So basically, I've said to them, look, it's roughly going to be between 40... It's up to an hour, but it will most likely be half hour to 40 minutes that I'm at your property. Because most people that I go to, I've been there for, I think the youngest the youngest call up customer I've got is Jan, which is my second job today. And she had me start last year, halfway through last year. The rest of them I've had for five to eight years plus. You know, it's it's like, not as if they don't know me. And I've not been in their garden. It's not like it's fresh garden or anything like that. So, yeah, it's just like... People are weird at the minute. <clears throat> at the minute, so yeah. So the state of play is I've advertised this year. I've actually put a lot of effort and money into advertising. So I've had a website built. I've had new adverts made. I've had a new logo made. I'm just waiting on the guy to get back to me about sign writing his van. Um, and it will be the first time I've advertised in eight years, um, just purely for the fact that I need to fill some spaces because at the minute. Um, what I used to do was a week on the grass and gardening and a week fencing and whatever else I can fit in, like big hedges and stuff like that. So I used to keep two days, but then it got to a point where I was needing a whole week 
Um, so that's what I did and just crammed everyone into a, a week. Where now, I think not now at the minute, I think my latest day, or latest I'm out any day is probably about three o'clock in the afternoon. Which for me, if you're starting out and you think, God, you got like 10 or 15 customers a day, when you start out, that's pretty good. That's really good and it keeps you busy. But when you've been doing this a long time, that is not really enough, especially for only one week, a fortnight, so two weeks, a, a month, and you're just trying to run around and find something to do for the next week. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's quite scary, especially now because I've got this van. Normally what, I, normally what I tried to do was to have all my outgoings at a minimum, um, which meant like buying like a cheap van and stuff like that and silly things like that. Um, so I didn't have a monthly outcome, but now I've spent a lot of money on the van and I've got, I've got like to make sure that I've got a certain amount in the bank every month. So yeah, it makes you think, but there we go. Um, so it's not been easy, but business never, business never is. And life is never easy. If it was easy, everyone would do it and we'd all be buggy bored, wouldn't we? Uh, but onwards and upwards, I will get a video out next week of fencing because I've actually I've got that fencing to do on uh, Tuesday. I did do a fence the other week. I started doing it and then the camera died on me like an idiot and I didn't notice and I was doing all this filming. Yeah, typical sort of thing. But um, I hope everyone's good. Excuse me. And hope hopefully, hopefully that clears a few things up about Postmix, really. Oh, there was another guy um, that made a comment about that repair. You should put the uh, the bottom bolt in first. Um, as long as that that repair spur is flush against the post, it doesn't make a difference, really. Um, I mean, as long as you get... If you don't have that fence straight and you put any po bolt in and then try and stand it up and it's not quite where it should be, it's going to push the post out. Of whack so you need to make sure that your post is straight first before you put any bolts in and make sure it's flush if it's not flush to the bottom yes put the bottom bolt in because it'll, ma it'll most likely bring it in closer but if that is the case you've got something in the way at the bottom and you should dig it out i i basically dug all the concrete around out of that hole and there was nothing at the bottom apart from the post and it just stood right next to it so it made no rhyme or reason which bolt you put in first basically um yeah, so there we go. So I'm going to go get on with my day, stuff waffling. I will do an update on the van, although, like I said, I wanted that to be the last one. A few people made a comment about that, saying, do you really think they will pay for it? No, probably not. But the one thing that really pees me off is the fact that it's ignored me now. Even even Evans Holshaw, whoever it is from Evans Holshaw, sent me a link via email to say, please leave us a review. So I did. And it was very honest and it was to the point and I told people to avoid them. And somebody got back to me within two hours saying, really sorry about your experience. It's not what we want. If we have any problems or anything like that, it please email me, email me on that on this address. So I did. And that was a week ago today. And I've not heard anything back. So they really don't really they really don't give five eights a bugger all, do they? Um, but I like I say, I've been running around like a headless bloody chicken trying to bring work in. And I've not had a chance to put the van in. I'm going to, I should have a shortish day today. So I'm going to go and take it to the garage and see if it can fit me in over the weekend because we're away at the coast at the weekend. So hopefully you'll be able to fit me in and um, we'll go from there. I think, I think one thing that really gripes me about the whole experience is I went to a main dealer and I think I expected way too much from them. I should have just expected them to be just as much of a shock as anybody else, really. Because at the end of the day, they are just car salesmen and they are just full of shite. Sorry if you're a car salesman, but I'm not sorry because every car salesman or, or, or salesman, that, no, actually, no, I've had bad dealings with cars as well. So I'm just going to vehicle salesman. I just think you're all full of shite, personally. And you'll just say anything and do anything to make sure you get that sale. That's my two pennies worth. So what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll see what my mechanic says about the van. And uh, we'll go from there because, yeah, I don't think they'll pay for it. But, you know, the, the van came with issues and I made a note of it as soon as I found it. And I've been battering them for them. Whether they found anything or not is a different matter or they could hear anything. I feel it's getting 
would I say worse? It's more consistent, the noise, than it was before, whereas it was only slight and it was going, but now it's... I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't think you'd notice it if you had... Well, I can notice it because I'm listening for it, but when you've got the radio on, you don't really hear it, but it's just the fact that I know that it's there, and it's one of them things, like I say to the wife, it's, there's nothing wrong. You know, it's, it's nice. But then she's comparing it to the car, which is shite. Um, and... You know, it's just one of them things. I paid a lot of money for the van and I expected it to be... You expect it to be right, don't you? So that was it. So I'm going because I've just realised it's 15 minutes and all I've done is sat here and jiffer jaffer and um, I've got to get some work done, really, because I need to get finished early today to get this van in and we're going to the coast. Woohoo! They're open. Not that I'm really looking forward to it, but it'll be really cold and a tin box. But you're getting away, aren't we? So there we go. Right. See you guys on the next one.